the Great Search, brought to you by Rude and DigiKey, where Lidea uses all of her powers of engineering every week to show you how to find the things in the world on digikey.com. Perhaps the biggest, best place to get electronic components in the world, well, you think, anyways. Any who, Lidea, what is this week's Great Search? Okay, so this week's Great Search is while I was designing, you know, whatever I was designing, that's kind of what makes it into the Great Search, because I was like, I'm actually searching for this, and I should do it. Um, this week's Great Search is a eight-channel um, buffer transceiver, non-inverting, that I added onto um, the Scorpio feather that will convert three volt, one megahertz signal, so fairly fast um, signals, from about three, 3.3 volts, safely up to five volts. That's the five volt signal comes from the USB line. The microcontroller runs on 3.3. I want the output to be five volts. I can't run the microcontroller at five volts. I run the microcontroller at three volts. I output the signal and I buffer it up and out um, into a pretty uh, five volt level signal. And I want a eight channel buffer that does this uh, nicely and cleanly. So let's go to the computer. All right. Okay. So this is my schematic. These are my signals coming in, eight signals. Um, I'm using, I, I, th there's actually a couple chips that do eight channel. There's like literally buffers. This is technically a transceiver. Um, the 74HC245. Um, and most importantly is I need it to be really small. Uh, sometimes, you know, for example, if I, uh, let me just for fun's sake, I'll show the TSOP. The TSOP would not have fit. <laughs> so this would be uh, the TSOP version. And, uh, you know, I'm already using 0402 resistors. There really, there was no space. I had to go down um, to a QDFN. Uh, and thankfully, there are QDFNs of 74 series logic. Um, but I never showed, you know, I talked a little bit about like, NOR gates a while ago, but I never showed um, how I spec this transceiver because... You know, the 74 just means like it's a logic, it's a family, the TI logic family. 245 is the name of the eight channel um, transceiver, non inverting transceiver. But the AHT, AHCT, hold on, it is the AHCT actually all sort of stands for stuff. And you, and you can't necessarily swap out different versions. Um, the AHC is, I think, high speed, and uh, A, I think, means it can um, run from three to five volts and can take up to, uh, it can take voltages that are above the VCC if necessary. So it's, it's got that, can uh, go from three volt to five volts or five volts down to three volts. And the T is transistor level input. If you get the AHT, oh, sorry, if you get the AHC, version um, that is CMOS and when you add the T it's transistor level logic and I'll show you in the data sheet uh, why you want transistor level logic that's actually a uh, hat tip to uh, Paul S from PJRC uh, you you can get away with running the non T version but it is good taste and it's the same price to use the transistor level uh, logic version because it does it does make a difference you know if your voltages are a little marginal it can make a difference okay so let's go to um, the DigiKey. That's the French site? Yes, <laughs> sorry. The DigiKey. Yeah. And I want to look for a um, buffer, oh sorry, buffer transceiver. Receiver, I before E, E before I. Did I spell it right? Yeah, so there is a whole section called um, Interface, drivers, receivers, transceivers. They're all kind of the same thing, kind of, sort of, maybe, you know, again, I happen to know that I want the 245 series, but I'm showing how you could kind of, like, reverse figure that out. Okay, so for this, uh, it's going to be an active design, so I only want um, active parts. It needs to be small, so I only want uh, surface mount, and I'm going to apply... Um, next up, I only want stuff that's normal stocking, and I'm going to, for now, just exclude marketplace products. So that just kind of reduces it. And then I thought I clicked active, but maybe I didn't. I'll say that the new thing where it previews 
the things for you before it does them has confused me a little bit. Okay. Um, I think... Oh, you know what? I'm actually in the wrong section. There are two places. I went to drivers and transceivers. I meant to go to buffers and transceivers. Silly me. Um, sorry. That was interface. So you've been learning something for me. I went to interface, drivers, transceivers. What I meant to go is logic, buffers, uh, receivers, and transceivers. So silly me. But um, now we're here. And yeah, now you're seeing there's 74 series logic here. So yes. Okay. So again, I'm going to go for active. And I'm going to go for normally stocking. And I'm going to exclude marketplace okay great so next up uh, i want non-inverting uh inverting of course flips things over but i don't want that i want signal in to be signal out so i'm going to select buffer and transceiver both non-inverting exactly the opposite of what i just clicked which is ironic um okay uh so next up i want uh surface mount and now we're, so technically a transceiver, um, the data can go either way. Uh, so you could use a buffer, um, but in this case, one thing I want to do is I want to get to have eight bits of data and it can be a little confusing. I'll say, cause sometimes there's, there's two things here. There is um, number of elements and that goes from one to eight. And then there's number of bits per element and that goes one to 10. And you might be like, well, how do, do I want one element with eight bits or eight bits with one element? You try both. In this case, I had already looked it up. So I want one element with eight bits, which is a little confusing. So let me apply that. Okay, so now you're seeing, we're seeing a lot of uh, 245s because that's kind of the classic part number for the 8-bit non-inverting um, transceiver. Okay, so next up, um, remember I wanted to have that small um, package. The TSOP was too big. So normally I'm not as picky about the package, but um, this time I'm skipping over all the TSOPs and the TFSOPs. And I'm going straight for the 20 QFNs. And I'll say they're actually aren't a ton of um, QFN options, but the QFN, you know, it's going to be much, much smaller. It doesn't have legs. Uh, a lot of the 74 series logic, of course, started as dip, moved to SOIC, then SSOIC. And then, you know, you can sometimes get it in BGA um, or in this case, DFN. Um, so last step, I'm going to do the voltage supply. Now, remember, it's the microcontroller's three volts but I want to output five volts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power the buffer with five volts. I feed it three volt logic. Whatever it's powered by is the output signal. So um, I'm going to make sure that this can be powered by up to 5.5 or six volts. And this is where it's like, it gets really limited. So there's really only like a dozen options now. And then let's just look at the ones that are in stock. So now there's only 10, and I messed something up, hold on. Okay, um, so now there's a couple different versions here. There's like the VHC, the AHC, the HC, the HCS, HCV, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, what I'm saying is I'm going to be using the HCT. And the reason for that is if you go to the data sheet, and this data sheet covers both the AHC and the AHCT version. Again, AHC, CMOS, AHCT is uh, transistor TTL logic. Um, and if you look at the, okay, this is the AHCT 245. Um, the high level input logic is two volts. You can see right here. And if you go up to the AHC, the non-T version, it's CMOS, so the voltage input level is gonna be much higher. The, like, the requirement for it to register is high. 
if you power it from five volts, it technically wants you to give it at least 3.8 volts logic, which if you're running a three volt logic, you're not gonna get. Now I'll say, because I'm, I'm a, a naughty person, um, and I'm gonna get coal in my stocking, except I, I'm not, because <laughs> I'm, I'm Jewish, but if I was, you shouldn't assume that your AHC logic will be happy uh, with a voltage lower than 3.8. The data sheet specs it at 3.8. It wants 3.8. If you're giving it 3.3, it's gonna likely work, so like, don't freak out. But the right thing to do if you're specking the part, and it's the same price anyways, is to go for the AHC T version, which has the TTL logic input, which means that the logic input level is the same no matter what the voltage is. And then maybe one day we'll cover the difference between CMOS and TTL logic. Trade-off, uh, use a lot more power on the TTL logic input. So uh, downside, but. If you're driving eight strands of NeoPixels from this board, you don't care about power because one NeoPixel uses more power than this transceiver. So, not a problem. So, um, this part is quite nice and better off, it's in stock. Best of all, it's in stock. Yeah. So, I ordered a bunch of these. Um, and uh, there's a couple, again, there's like the VHCT maybe. There's There could be others that also have... Uh, can be driven off of five volts and can take a lower voltage, but I don't remember all of them. I do know that this one will work, so I'm, I'm happy to purchase it. Uh, and if it ever runs out of stock, I can always look at alternatives. That's great search.